there's no other World War II game out there that quite has this same level of well, at all sound design. The sound is amazing, but the the gunplay, the mechanics of it, just nothing else comes close, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And I don't want. I'm think, not ready uh, to give this up. No chance. Bo Boogie put it well for me when he says this is a game I was waiting for all my life. Mm. Go, son. Go. Holy dick ball. Oof. Yeah, that's a hard landing. But if you look at your map now, that should become an MSP. You might not be able to tell by us just flying around, but it's four kilometers uh, long by three kilometers wide. And that's um, where the water line is. So there's another kilometer out to sea, but obviously there's wow. nothing you can play at sea. Um, so it's one of the bigger maps uh, for Postscriptum. Um, that should allow us pretty much around six layers, um, completely diverse play from close in weapon battles in Pergos to big sniper battles across the airfield to tanks uh, rolling across and, and otherwise. What's up everybody and welcome to the Milsim Tax Shooter and Historic Gaming Channel. We give away a Steam key at the end of every week. For details on how to enter, just stay tuned. Alright, so this is huge news for the Postscriptum community. Unless you're living under a rock somewhere, you know about the four big mods coming. The Eastern Front, the Pacific Front, North Africa, and the Battle of Crete. Well, believe it or not, boys, the Battle of Crete's release is right around the corner. My good buddy from Down Under, Dangerous DB, had a chance to meet up with the developers and really go over everything coming with the mod. And its first big map, Malame. Be sure to head over to Twitch and give him a follow after the video and if you'd like check out the entire two hour video as what I'm gonna do here is try to summarize and kind of condense everything down to a shorter video without leaving anything major out. I want to give a big shout out to the Mercury mod guys down in a pinned comment I'm gonna leave a link to their discord be sure to jump in there also I'll leave a link to Dangerous DB's Twitch channel. The wait is almost over boys presenting the Mercury mod. There you go, there you go. Boys, boys, boys. Look at this piece of art that you have here. How are you all? It's been a while. It's been over a year uh, since we first discussed what your plans were. And now, uh, a year later or so, we are finally actually inside. And mind you guys, I'm lagging, lagging like a tit right here at 370 ping. So if I... Uh, if if the game looks terrible, it's not the game. It's 100% my Australian ass catching up with uh, what these boys have been doing. Uh, that's not a problem, mate. We'll uh, we'll see what we can do. If we drive you around, then hopefully you're not crashing into too many trees. I wouldn't crash in the first place, mate. I'm Australian. Just as good as Daniel Ricciardo. <laughs> so I guess... Um... If we do a bit of introductions then about who we've got here, because uh, you've got pretty much a, a core of the group here, uh, with the exception of our 3D modelers and, and animators. Uh, so you've got uh, Maguire, who's uh, pretty much uh, been the right-hand man kind of thing all through it. So right. texture, modeler, um, Unreal Engine, he's done mapping, he's Thank done all you. sorts for us there. Uh, you've Ooh. got uh, Sven <laughs> as well, Husky. So uh, Husky does all of our QA work. He does all of our blueprints. Uh, he's um, pretty much the man who's incorporated all these vehicles that you see before us into the mod as well, which is awesome. Uh, and then you have the level design genius over there that is Gunslinger, who um, I've never met anyone who can speedily push out quality in terms of map design like, like he does. So. Um, those are the guys we've got here tonight, so if there's any questions um, from across the community, then it means that hopefully we've got the right people here to, to answer them about the map or how the vehicles work or, or models or anything like that. Stay uh, still, buddy. Yeah. I'm looking at your radio. <laughs> Back for your attack. Buy another war bond. So you notice oh, these uh, characters are the, the same ones as Shifting Sands, so that was part of our uh, agreement that we have with them. Uh, the Thompson will be shared with them if they want to use that. Um, you'll see also the vehicles and the Vickers tank will be shared with them as well. So um, 
by helping each other we've really sped up development which is uh, which has been pretty awesome look at that i remember you showing me just a picture of this thing and now here in our uh, in the flesh in our digital flesh we are looking around in a piece of history that uh, is finally looking the part look at this hey this, you reckon this is awesome. holy a, shit a dead set do you think this would take on a king tiger that might be a push but uh <laughs> yeah i'll get there so obviously what you can see here is is work in progress we know the armor rework is going to throw all the work on this out the window so we'll we'll have to look at redoing that whether we refine the model um in line with the armor rework uh, we'll probably do that not an initial release but following on from that uh, we don't want Malame and, and Mercury to just be a one-hit wonder. We'll we'll try and refine it as we go to get as best quality as we can, um, even when we're taking on other maps as well. So um, that's very much work in progress, and it'll all change with the armor rework. But it's there; it works. Um, yeah, that looks good. It it's looks nice beautiful. I'm so happy to see that. Um, and uh, I guess yeah, that year and a half ago, we were just talking about all this sort of stuff and. And the reveal of actually having it in, in the, the game was uh, hype enough. But you guys have done so much work. I mean, you guys are doing this out of love. And I, don't, I can't imagine how much countless time you guys have spent on it. I know that Cats keeps coming into my stream and giving me little pieces of info and updates as it goes along over the course of the year. So I know that you guys have been busy working. And uh, I can guarantee... There are a lot of happy people out there looking forward to getting their hands into the position that I am right now uh, and playing along. So uh, I tell you what, ob obviously you've got the Thompson in your hand. That's a new weapon. The Lee Enfields will all be changing, but these are just a placeholder for now. For now. But if you want, how about we jump in the transport because that's open. And if you want to sit in the Ooh. front seat, I'll uh, drive away. Assuming Please. you can get in there. As a drive Hopefully my laggy, laggy ass somewhere. Oh, I'm pressing buttons. Here we are. Oh, hey, I'm in. All right. So there we go. Stream, get ready for some lag fest here. I know the boys at the yeah. uh, Aussie Rum Runners server will be uh, excited to put this up on their server here in Australia for us. Thank God. But uh, do you know who else is keen to download and get this thing going? All the other servers. It's the first yeah. AL. Um, yep. First AL, which I'm a member of, that'll be on their rotation on Pegasus. So that'll be on the primary uh, server. Oh, look, a duckling just joined. So we have Snazzy coming in as well. Oh, my um, Lord. I think we'll see it on the other big servers as well. Nomads as well I need to discuss with, but I know they're excited about it as well. Um, and, and we've had quite a lot. Is that everyone aboard the, uh, the fun wagon, is it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Depending oh, on so now. How much sleep I've had this might uh, set me over the edge. Um, generally, I like to have a, a beer in my hand, but uh, yeah, it's a bit too early for me. A little late, uh, not enough sleep. Well, hopefully this isn't blurring on your stream, and it's uh, no, it's, it's all working good. out okay. So that's good. So the first village, well, first town we're coming to is Pergos. Uh, so I'll just swing around this town slightly for you, just to give you an idea. Of it, you'll have seen the videos before. The, you've got this option of fighting in the narrow streets around here, um, with the various different Greek uh, buildings and everything associated with that. You've got the church as well; it's up there. Um, you'll have seen on the pictures um, of various close-in fighting to to pretty much offset the rest of the map. Where you'll have seen on the previous rest of the map, uh, quite a big open area, really. Um, where, where fighting can take place. Beautiful. Hang on, I'm just going to zoom in onto that on the map for everyone so they can have a quick look at the layout. So yeah, there you so go. You That's beautiful. Right, right next one. Us. So that's Pergos itself. Um, I'll come down now. Where we're going now is to Malame. So in uh, the modern era, these two towns have pretty much merged together now, and they're uh -huh. just one. So um, it is now just known as Malame, I believe, in Crete, uh, which is somewhere where we hope to get to next year. If you look over to your left, you'll see a 
Uh, JU-52 as well. You'll see a few of these crashed around the map. Uh, not too many though. Uh, you can see our MSPs just following us around as well. So you can see that's another vehicle we've got working. Look at them go. Yeah. So for our next village, we're now entering Malame, uh, the town which uh, gives the map its name, uh, or certainly gives the airfield its name as well. Um, at the moment, you'll see lots of these uh, buildings are empty of furniture. Uh, that is because we've put a lot of furniture in Tavronitis. We want to see with large scale play tests what the performance is like. Mm -hmm. Not had any major issues so far. We're doing it up to around 20 players. So once we get AD on, we'll be able to see if we can put furniture in all the buildings with minimal performance impact. So there you are. You can see the, the hill itself with the AA guns on the top um, as well. And also, if you jump out here, we've got a fantastic view out of the airfield. So this has been one of the funnest... Funnest? Is that a word? One of the best uh, parts of playtesting is actually... In most games, they don't let snipers be snipers, and you see snipers like 100 meters from a point. Here, you will be able to score the longest kills, potentially, as a sniper in any game. Um, where you can see out there is roughly about a kilometer out. Oh, And again, hello. you shouldn't see too much performance drop, um, based on how we've, we've optimized a lot and otherwise. But, uh, so long range engagements compared to Pergos where you've got those short range engagements in little side streets. So hopefully that'll that'll balance it off quite nicely. Uh, you've got the flat and openness of the airfield again with the verticality of, of Hill 107. So again you've got a bit uh, a bit change there as well. Um, lots of open ground but also lots of cover provided by the uh, the ground undulating pattern as well. So you can't really see the beach because that's undulates down. Um, same around towards the river, um, so there's some natural sort of soft cover if you like. Um, this provided there as well as all the trees. So um, quite an open map in parts, but also um, one way you can actually get up close if you use the terrain wisely. Yeah, there's enough that you can dart around, get into some sort of at least soft cover. Um, it's the occasional piece of hard cover. Now, is this the, the hill where the New Zealanders essentially just fought like absolute heroes the last uh, bullet to bayonet i guess they actually abandoned this position this is um, the, okay it wasn't properly taken by the germans they actually abandoned it due to a communication breakdown um so it was well, fought right. over quite considerably um and then once they lost contact with their headquarters they actually pulled back um from that so uh, that's that's kind of the story of the hill uh, they did want to counter attack and retake it because as you can see it is a very commanding position yeah um, and bear in mind our height maps have used um, the actual terrain as well of, of Crete so this is pretty much what you would have expected in real life in terms of the vision that it wow. provides uh, so it's it's pretty 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 commanding um for that reason on both layers um the hill has to be taken before you take the airfield uh, because we purely just dis <laughs> discovered in the play test even with a small scale it is in almost impossible to take the airfield without holding the hill um so it is a, a very very good uh, and historically accurate defense point That's so if beautiful. we jump back to the car we'll uh, we can go down the hill and i'll take you down to the airfield oh hang on sir is that a Louis gun I see in your hands, big man? Look at that. Back the attack. Buy another uh, war bond. Thank you. Is that Snazzy bringing up the, the nice new models? Yeah. Yeah. My lap. Oh, I've got Odin to come in. <laughs> oh, nice drift, sir. There we go. So, uh, welcome to the airfields. Back the uh, attack. You son Buy of bitch. Feel free oh, to oh, oh. have a look around as you wish. Uh, so you had the fleet air arm here, and you had the Royal Air Force. So hence why you've got the different types of aircraft. If you're wondering what the names Back are, the attack. the aircraft well, there, which my two, uh, my two dogs, which are Dashans, Beans, and Monty. Okay. So, uh, hence, there's little things here and there and everywhere on the mod, um, not just for me, but for the other guys as well, of, of things that mean stuff to them, um, which has been quite nice uh, to do. 
But yeah, feel free to run around, have a, have a look what you think around the airfield. Oh, yes, see, please. Watch out, sir. Um, yeah. yeah, what, 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 is, more to the... what is this aircraft Sorry, called again? Sorry. That is a fairy former. A fairy former. And what is this big ass window, canopy window at the back here? Like, what is the. Is there a radio man or something at the back of that? Like, what is this? A, a bomber? Yeah, it's a, it was a uh, fighter, but it was pretty much two seats. I think you could get three guys in um, and, yeah, used for re reconnaissance during the war as well as, as a fighter as well. Um, it looks kind of just like a long, long hurricane, really. But there's not many games where you get to see these in. Um, so it's, oh. it was quite nice bringing in an asset that you don't really see in games much. Um, you've got the nice <laughs> starter engine as well there for the, oh, yes. the REF. Which is again standard to the model used in the period. Um, so we've gone that much in detail as best we can. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, if you want, we can head out to the west where you've got the REF Splenums. So they had uh, Blenheim bombers um, as well. Yes, and, uh, absolutely. The... That's, a, that's a piece of uh, kit that I'm aware of. And a little favourite of mine as well as the Air Raid Bell. So the uh, the air raid siren. They didn't really have a siren. They used a ship spell. Um, and my my background is I spent uh, about nine years in the Royal Navy. And on ship spells, what they do on the inside is they put around the names of the the officers' kids who get baptized on the ship. So inside the ship spell is the names of uh, those who've been helping out on the mod as well. So again, it's not one that you'll be able to see very well, but it's something we know that's there. Um, there's just a little signature our little mark to say you know we're, we're pretty pleased with what we've done here all right can i put my kids names in there <laughs> you can drive with bullets if you want see how good a writer you are <laughs> not that good i'll tell you that but at least i've got enough ammo in this old girl that i should be able to pull it off um, <laughs> what is this a 50 round drum yep excuse me for a second It there is pretty OP, so we will probably limit to around two or three magazines. Um, otherwise, it's going to be, you know, the the STG or the Anzacs. So um, we don't want to push too too OP on that. Uh, Blenheims as well. Can I get the, in here? We saw yes. The teasers. Hopefully, I can get back out. Yes. <laughs> What's my? F uh, should be should be standard ninety. I'm fairly certain I don't like to dick around with settings. Look at these Blenheims, eh? I've uh, flown a few of these in the old War Thunders. Look at that. So again, this will be uh, your Anzac Commander calling as well. Uh, you've got a Blenheim and you've got a Hurricane. So the the Commander callings are not symmetrical, so it's not like you get exactly the same stuff. So it's kind of like what PG did on their... Uh, um, Utah kind of thing, where they gave you know one one side artillery and and all of that, and the other didn't get as much. Um, so we've tried to reflect that. Um, so the commander uh, call in. Uh, am I a radio man? You are, Let's my see. dear friend. Let's. Um... So if I come up to you, you'll be able to see what you've got now as a commander call in, and then later when we do the uh, the um, Germans and let you jump on that. You will see how much more stuff they'll get. Um, Do you mind if I the send something in there? In. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, go All for right. it. What's a good location that's close enough to see the action? Uh, we can go that. up to the top Back of the, the attack. tower as well. Buy another so A better view or whatever you want. That's all right, mate. We got we got days. We got days. Don't you worry about this. All right, here we go. Here comes the air show. Probably need to Best looking this PS. map. Yes, it's not even finished. How close are you guys to finish, by the way? Uh, we just want to play test. So the only thing that's missing at the moment is the weapons. Um, once the armor overhauls out, then we can really refine the uh, figures. Uh, hoping that PG have done the Matilda. Um, so fingers crossed on that. Um, but once that's out, we'll just double check our references. We should have play tested by then to see if there's any balancing issues with the map that we need to consider. Um, but I reckon maybe about a month, maybe a month and a half. 
month, month and a half. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So there you go. So um, the Anzacs only get one of each, pretty much. Um, they did have, historically, um, air raids conducted by Blenheims um, on the island, uh, which was actually, I think, the same squadron as was left a load here as well. So. They were actually fighting on the ground in the air as well at the same time. I think it was 30 squadron. I have to double check that. Um, um, hang on one second. Is uh, the airfield historically, did the Germans take the airfield quite quickly? Uh, what was the. I believe it was after the first day. Um, after the first day. The, fir the first day was pretty much a bloodbath for the Germans. Mm -hmm. um, yes, they were that's actually true. landing into um, Anzac troops. Uh, battalions and, and and detachments, so they were they were coming down straight away without their weapons and, and getting shot immediately, pretty much on hitting the ground. Um, I remember reading there was a British officer who was keeping a tally as if he was um, killing rabbits, and he was with the, the tank regiments. And he was just going around with a pistol, pretty much picking them off. Um, it's so it was sad. it was pretty brutal, pretty brutal, yeah. But we, we've had to consider that now as well for the gameplay. So the idea of just landing without weapons and going to get it won't be on the vanilla um, release. But what we will do is we'll look at doing a realism layer so we can cater for the realism community as well um, to allow them, them to play that. But the vanilla offensive layers will be uh, you'll have weapons when you jump out of the JU-52 just for the balancing perspective. Gotcha. Uh, so you're not doing gameplay. the old ammo crate uh, pickup situation as of yet. As of yet, no. We've we've experimented with it. Our concern is just the gameplay of that. Um, you know, as we say on day one, it was a slaughter. Um, in reality, uh, so we don't really want that all the time on this. Otherwise, it'll be unplayable. Uh, so we do have to make some uh, considerations there. But as said, for the realism community, we will look at doing a realism layer. Um, and, and we can look at cooperation potentially with that when we come to it. Um, but we're experimenting with stuff on the side. It just won't be on the first couple of layers. That's all. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, I mean, look, let's um, remember, boys, that the actual Germans did jump without weapons and they did collect weapons and they still won. So if they can do it in real life, you can do it in a video game. Harden up. Buttercups? Yeah, and I'm, unbelievable. I mean, in, and it was all due to a communication error because they uh, basically lost touch with their command and so decided that they'd have to uh, fall back. If, if I recall my that... little bit of history sorry. finding, uh, sorry, uh, mate, uh, in my little bit of history finding on the first one, the commander kind of shut the, the bed and he was determined that they'll come in by sea. So he, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, he didn't do it. Now, look at that. Snazzy, you look fine, good sir. Look at that. Get up there. Oh, look at that little bit of detail there. But what I'll do now, mate, is um, I'll take you up towards the bridge in Tavernitis. Have a look around Tavernitis. That's got all the furniture in the buildings. Again, we'll see what performance is like with the 80v80. And yep. then we can determine if we want to do more of that or less or, or what, really. I am. 100% with, I'm sure, the rest of the community yeah. in saying it makes sense. Between, um, and there's a sound that we have. Um, it makes sense 100% having furniture in buildings. But if it comes to the cost or or performance, we'll have a look at it. Sounds good. Yeah, so that's that's one of the issues we've got at the moment. The far sound sounds good for the, the Lewis gun. The First person sounds good. Uh, the issue is the medium distance and next to it. So we're right. we're refining that. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so there is that is one of the bugs that the boys are experiencing and they're aware of, and that's I guess why we haven't got our tasty little hands on this yet. Yep. So a little bit more patience, and then we can uh, go from there. Let's see if I jump up here. There we go. Morning, Sam. So the bridge, I'm sure you saw a lot of before. Uh, so we'll come around past that and we'll go to Tavernitis. But I do, I do love the bridge. I know uh, it's been on lots of our pictures because it's quite iconic. And I also love the fact that uh, 
in postscriptum you to take a bridge is pretty bloody difficult but for this one you can go under it as well as over it so it's not too bad um i just hear a motorbike so, oh i'm not sure maybe yeah. ryan's got a cat crowd out uh, but here you go, here's Tavernitis itself. You can see that this has got furniture decking out the place. Oh, yes. Um, as well. So we are, feel free to jump out and, and have a look. We are intent on putting some furniture in and giving some form of atmosphere. But as said, if it comes at the cost of performance, it's then we have to go. consider that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so when it comes to ADV-80, we'll use this as a test base to see if Tavernitis has any significant issues. Uh, if it doesn't, we'll add it to Malame and all the surrounding villages. The airfield's already got it anyway. Um, and then at the last test, it'll probably be Pergos, because obviously Pergos is a big town. Um, we don't want to go uh, crash and tan on it. Um, sorry, Snazzy. Um, so uh, we want it to run cleanly for, for players but obviously we want to give that immersion as well beautiful right i love these uh flowers they uh give this place a bit of pop hey yeah a bit of beauty yeah, a bit of beauty mate it's hard to believe eh? all right but yeah. we'll uh Bumpy we'll drive road. down to the the german main um what we'll do is we can respawn there as the germans and then if you take the german commander We'll jump on the Ketting Trad, <laughs> which is still being refined, and you can have a go driving the Ketting Trad. Um, oh, okay. I'll be perfectly honest; it gives me it gives me a seasickness pretty much being on that Ketting Trad. So, yeah, N nine years in the Royal Navy was never seasick until I got on the Ketting Trad. So there, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, so what what we'll do is we'll respawn here as the Germans, um, switch faction, and then you can try out some of their commands and we'll respawn at the main. Uh, as you can see the tracks are still being worked. Oh yeah it's all right. I'll take you up to your I'll take you up to your command car. The other guys can jump in captured Morris trucks or whatever. Um, and I'll meet you guys towards here. Oh, or spawn that. Oh, you spawned a command one. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, we can just take a command car then. If I jump off, then we'll let you drive. See how you find it. There. Here you go. Yeah, this one here, Dane. Hang on, Back in the main base, mate. What do you got? Back in the main base. It's got a, a radio one. one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah. So you can see it's got a little radio on the side. Look at that. Kick it over, girl. Kick it over. You will you will find it works okay. a lot better off-road than it does on-road as well. Hurry up, sir. Move on. Oh, the thing is going to drive me nuts. I wish I could aim down a little bit further. But if you want, you can, if, sorry, if, if you want, just take it wherever you want outside the red zone and then uh, you can get a good view of a good area and then call in as much as you'd like. Okay. I'll Let's put a marker go. down. Put it on yeah. 32. Perfect. Put as much as you want strafing runs around and power drops and everything and we'll see the entire Luftwaffe come in. Every every BM BM everything. bird coming. Bring it all in. Everything up on thirty two. Just don't kill us in the in when you do it. Oh. And then the game is who can spot the first plane. Alright, here we go. You'll see, by the way, this Morris, uh, for balancing, they've got the textures of the Germans. Again, for the realism mod, we may look at capture mechanics to allow that as well. Oh, Have you called everything? Ah, uh, pretty much. Nice. Baby, 
there's a glider coming in. Go, son, go. Holy dick balls. Oof. Yeah, that's a hard landing. But if you look at your map now, that should become an MSP. That's cool. There you go. So there's your spawn point. And ah. as well as that, I take it, did you bring in the, uh, the parachutes? I did. I did. Oh, where are these coming in from? Right in front of us. Dead north. There you go. There you go. You'll be able to parachute out as well. That's cool. Very cool. I feel like saluting him, but I guess I might get banned if I do that historically. <laughs> and there's a little fella coming. That's beautiful, mate. Outstanding. That adds a little bit of so, spark to the game. So that's pretty much where the, the, we're at at the moment with our main points. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to shift P, and I'll put me. some uh, areas around for you to go check out. Uh, so you got point of interest 42. Yeah, all right. It's back behind me, isn't it? And then over to 76. Over here. So you can guess our first layers are pretty much what you can see now on the map. Mm -hmm. But we intend to use all of our map. So it's not like certain areas are just blank. You'll see that... Uh, okay, no. Pretty much stuff everywhere. Chili. Um, yeah, look at that. So, All right, so we've got a nice little cow farm here that's doing really well for itself there. And then if you head towards 76 as well from there, you'll see uh, some other potential um, points of interest. Where you've got go. the bunkers, you've also got some terraces. Hey, look at that. It's beautiful. Doing very well. Look at it. Mind you, I'm pretty much flying like I am drunk with this 300 odd pings, and it's handling quite well. <laughs> so there you've got a, uh, a sort of raised up uh, village with uh, trenches as well, like a fortified village. Uh, a supply area as well. Supply area, yeah. Uh, you've got the terracing as well. That's that's quite typical of Greek areas. Um, mm. That is a pain in the ass to do. So there's not that much of it on the map. Um, but yeah, so there's another potential area. Moving off along that road, you can see you've also got the windmills as well. So you can very much expect. Um, we'll keep going as well because you've got Villa Thalia as well for the east. Uh, point of interest 27. Um, but you can very much expect that there'll be almost two kind of routes on the map. Um, yeah, I can see that. If you like. So you've got the northern route and then you've got the southern route as well. Um, so initial release, certainly two layers. Uh, we'll be looking at potentially another two and then potentially a realism. Um, work has started on the Greek faction. So uh, we've got a character designer who's literally just sent me a picture of the, the new uh, helmet for the, the Greeks, which will be pretty cool. Um, they'll get a new weapon um, in the Manlicker, which we showed previously, but that's going to get redone. Um, and in addition to that, uh, what else are they going to get? I might give them an Italian pistol as well, just as an introduction for the Italians uh, that's already done, the M1934. So we'll, we'll just see about that. <sighs> One of the so, ovens. I found one of the, the ovens that the Italians <laughs> are going to capture uh, after the war is practically done here. But um, oh, that's that awesome. Would be, that, would, that would be a cool game mode. You never know. Um, yeah, well, I do suggest that uh, add the capture the uh, pizza oven for the Italian faction. There's no enemy. Uh, <laughs> you'll be all right. But um, I think certainly with Malame, we can look at four, maybe uh, four five layers i'll just take you somewhere else if we go across pergos and we'll have a look at the harbor um, because there is another potential layer that we can look at for either the greek inclusion or or as people want to play it uh, if 
we go to the harbour and then we'll have a look at the church and the crash site as well that we're going to use to mix things up a bit. Um, looking, also, looking. your so that's in the stream, the stream area. Oh, in which here is a pretty open. Oh, yep, spotted it. App, yeah. I'll come back so to that. That's pretty damn open. Tap that one. Uh, you'll also see the little church area down here as well. There's another potential one. So we're kind of keen to use all of these points of interest as app zones. So you'll be able to explore the full map. Probably not on release. It'll probably just be the two layers on release. But then we'll try and add to it uh, from there to keep it interesting, keep it playable, um, and and see so, you know you guys can all all enjoy it really. Um, but we'll wring the most out of Malame because it is a beautiful map. It's probably one of the larger ones again in the game as well um you might not be able to tell by us just flying around but it's four kilometers uh, long by three kilometers wide and that's um where the water line is so there's another kilometer out to sea but obviously there's wow. nothing you can play at sea um so it's one of the bigger maps uh, for postscriptum um that should allow us pretty much around six layers um completely diverse play from close in weapon battles in Pergos to big sniper battles across the airfield to tanks uh, rolling across and and otherwise. Um, again, tanks is another asymm asymmetrical thing. So uh, with the Germans having so much air support from Stukas yeah, and otherwise, uh, they'll have two different AT guns, the Pac-36 and the LG-40, which we showed previously. Uh, to combat the Anzacs, Matildas, and um, Vickers Mark Sixes. For Rathemno, uh, the Germans will get two uh, Panzer Threes, I believe. I need to double check that. Um, but yeah, so they'll get a bit out of that. And when we eventually, one day, bring in the Italians, uh, you can expect to see the um, L3s uh, around the place as well. Um, at which point we'll we'll have to consider maybe uh, balancing for them as well with regards to AT guns and, and go from there. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty much Malame. It's pretty much where we're at. It's, it's where we're going. Um, the other map is in development at the Back moment. Back the attack. With Emno, Buy another war. Penciling has been working working away on. Um, that's had its height map put on. It's had its uh, uh, grass pretty much painted on as well. Uh, so what's left on there is to start putting buildings on and, and fleshing out cap zones um, and then it. start fleshing out the forests. So with them, no um, works on going with that. Greeks have works on going. The Italians works on going. Um, and Malame is nearly done. So we are um, flat out and it's, it's, uh, it's going well. Hopefully you guys like what you see. Mate, can I just say this is stunning and a part of history actually was that Hitler came here once in the 30s and then that's the only reason why he decided to invade is because he liked the, uh, <laughs> liked the uh, beach liked so the much. Tech chairs. That's right. Yeah. He was like, yep, yeah, that's it. Uh, we're going to get it. The Aussies have got he enough doesn't. beaches already. So, <laughs> fuck them. That's well, what he said. That's beautiful, guys. Ooh. Honestly, well done. You have done an outstanding job and remember people so this is a passion piece this is this is people doing this in their spare time and probably avoiding wives and girlfriends and children to, <laughs> to bring this to us and um, honestly it brings such joy to my face just seeing this and having this experience right now I bet you there's quite a few people that would be very interested in getting in here shortly. And as he says, it's, it could be only a couple, like a month or so away. Could so, be. And, and just to encourage other people as well, um, of our team, about half of us had never done a mod before. That includes wow. myself and Maguire. Um Sven, had you done a mod before? I think you'd done some individual oh, stuff, hadn't you? Some for squad, yes. Yeah, some for squad, but um, yeah, most of the team is pretty brand new to be honest to modding um and we've taught ourselves and, and been through hours of youtube videos to where we come across problems to actually get by it so if anyone's thinking oh i really want to make a map like that then you know do it just jump on youtube learn a specific skill set and find, find a good team or get a good team together Oof, that was that was unforgiving ah, um that was beautiful yeah 
just jump on YouTube, learn a specific skill. Find, find a good team. Or get a good team together. Oof, that was that was unforgiving. Ah, um, that was beautiful. Yeah. And it's it's lovely seeing Snazzy here. He's, uh, Snazzy, yeah. Just to say we we've you know we've kept Periscope fully advised of all of our stuff as we've gone on, um, and they've been very su supportive as as well of our work. Um, so. Uh, big thanks to them and a big thanks to the Shifting Sands lads as well um, and all the experienced modders who've, who've given us advice like KV or Mango or or, or anyone else of that ilk so uh, yeah it's it's come out quite nice but, uh, the majority of, of server hosts have been very encouraging and, and said they want this uh, on their servers and on their main servers for the most ones which I know would be uh, one many would want um, Mod size at the moment, I think it was was it one gigabyte down, one point three gigabyte download. Yeah, it rings a was bell. It, today, Sven? it around, didn't take me long. One point five. There you go. About one one point five gigabytes of download. That's obviously and it's compressed. And around fifteen gigabyte. So yeah, so Twelve once, to fifteen. Twelve to fifteen once once uh, not compressed. Um, Sounds a lot, but the good thing is then for Ethemno, most of the assets are in, um, so we won't need to bring them in again, if you like. It just references them. So Ethemno won't be another 15 gig. It will just add on a little bit more uh, using the existing references. So for the chapter, um, it should be pretty pretty reasonable, um, I think, for, for what we're offering offering the player base here. Yeah. If there's any questions from the player base on your stream or anything, then, then feel free to throw them at us. Um, any sort of things that anyone's concerned about or anything, we can, we can do that as well. I haven't got your stream open, so you just have to um, have to let me know. But um, oh, uh, Malame is in a New second, Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Malame is New Zealand, and uh, Rathemno will be the Australians, but it'll be the same player meshes if you like. It's just obviously a recognition of the different forces who fought at both. Uh, mod before Christmas, I would have to say it sounds. Quite promising, yes. So we could have a early Christmas gift uh, from the boys. Yes, you will. Oh, yes, we will. Can I yeah. can I get one of you guys to take over the commander and call in a um, uh, para paraplane for me, please? I would uh, quite uh, like to yeah, jump. Yeah, you'll have to give the roll. Uh, one second. I'll quickly respawn. Uh, should we all respawn and jump together? That would be nice. Yeah, can do. That'd if you guys nice. all want to jump out, I'll uh, call it in. Is there a uh, radio at me? <laughs> Good luck avoiding this. I've just I've just basically fired an arrow up in the air, and right now you've got Stukas and all sorts coming in around you. So, if you're ever going to experience the Battle of Creek, calling all of the support in in one single area at once is uh, is quite good fun, as we discovered earlier. A little peewee. It's one of my favourite planes to fly in. Yeah, the Buffalo. It's uh, pretty cool. Dear Lord. You can see the mod's pretty. Uh, Good for having everything calling it at once. It's not bad performance-wise. Oh, I'm running around having no no issues here. I should have jumped in the glider. All right, we're going to jump in a glider too. Wait until you're... Um... Uh, so the glider call-ins only activate yeah. when they're on the deck. For the realism ah, one, uh, son of a bitch. where okay. we can look at it. Uh, and we have tested it for realism. I think you saw the footage. Yeah, I, I did, I did. Maybe Snazzy has tried it before. Um, but the rest of us certainly have been in it. Um, so it does exist. It fine. does Winkers. work. But uh, again, it might be something for a realism layer rather than the normal offensive. For the offensive ones you can probably expect power, power jumps 
um, a bit further back from the spawn and stuff, but also the main just for that balancing uh, for vanilla. But we will look at a realism one. And they built sturdy. They can take a tree like that at 100 miles an hour. That's oh, beautiful. Only the best, only the best German wood that was. I think you know. All right, let's have a look at some questions, guys. Uh, one of them was uh, about the Greeks and the British. Now, Greeks, I believe, they're already doing the modelling for that, so I, I, this has to come eventually. Um, I thought they were going to be looting the weapons. That will be on a historical layer. Uh, let's no, so uh, fucking go. So the, so the Greek army did have um, units on, on Crete. Most of them were re-kitted out with British kits. Um, we've actually got a uh, an essay that I've been using that actually gives out all of the supply layouts that the Greek forces were given on Crete, which actually included the MP34, uh, is it, that you get in Chapter 2? So they actually had um, uh, some German weapons as well as French weapons, as well as British weapons. Okay. Uh, the civilians... Civilians did have looted weapons from warehouses as well, and lots of civilians fought on the battle. So uh, for some of the cap positions that you'll see on Malame, uh, stuff like the farms and stuff, they've been named after um, resistance members from the Cretan resistance. It's sort of a bit of a nod and, and tribute to them as well. Um, so you'll not see that on the mini-map, but on the caps, uh, I believe they're fully named in terms of what the farms are. Uh, oh, but yeah, nice. the Greek forces themselves, they, they pretty much had kit out from the British, whether it was Italian, French, German, oh. uh, or British kit, um, whereas it was just the civilians who were pitchforks and black muskets and that kind of stuff. But it would be great uh, to just just run around on a new field and see some new armor and uh, buy some new weapons. It, new, it's... It, it's going to bring a lot of people back. I definitely have a gut feeling that will be the case. And I know what the, the guys, the developers are doing right now for Postscriptum is got to be tiring work. And it's, you know, it's going to be worth it. It has to be worth it because, let's face it, there's no other World War II game out there that quite has this same level of, at all, sound design. The sound is amazing, but the, the gunplay, the mechanics of it, just nothing else comes close, in my opinion. Um, yeah. And I don't want to, I'm think, not ready uh, to give this up. No chance. Bo Boogie puts it, it well for me when he says, this is a game I was waiting for all my life. You mm. know, when I played Medal of Honor Allied Assault and loved that game. And then Postscriptum to me is like Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Yeah. On acid. You know, it's, it's, it's on crack. It's awesome. Um, so, yeah, it's it's the game I think that I waited for all my life, and it's 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 here. It's just I wish we could get more contact, more people, more players, more servers, and uh, hopefully yeah. that's coming now. You know? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, thank you to you guys for putting that effort in. I mean, it, it's going to show. That's all, folks. All right, boys, I hope you're as excited for the future as Postscriptum as I am. We got the four big mods coming. As you can see, Battle of Crete is right around the corner from release. Speaking of the armor overhaul, hopefully I can push it out maybe tomorrow. Snazzy has revealed even more information on the overhaul. We're going to go over that. Of course, I want to thank the Mercury mod guys. Battle of Crete is looking awesome. I cannot wait to get my grubby little hands on it. Big shout out to Dane Jarus DB. Don't forget to give him a follow at Twitter. Also, the entire two-hour showcase is over on his channel. You want to check that out? But I've had you guys for almost an hour now, so let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. You know, ain't going anywhere without giving a special shout-out to the channel members. I appreciate the hell out of you. You too could support the channel. Click the blue join button. I also have a Patreon linked in the description. Every little bit helps and inspires me. And don't forget, along with the exclusive content and emojis and badges and all that jazz, you get double the entry in every week's Steam Key. That's right, for as little as 25 cent a week, 99 cent a month, every week Steam Key, you get double the entries, giving you a huge leg up in winning. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. For those of you new around here, it's super easy to enter. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, join our little Discord community, it's linked in the bio. But most importantly, drop a comment. Say whatever you want, but within your comment, leave your Discord name and number that's going to work as your ticket stub. Good luck to everybody in the giveaways. I'll see you in the next one, and y'all be good to each other.